the talk uh, you are going now to see and to listen is an unexpected one. How to get yourself into the USB protocol without pain. Don't ask. Uh, that's the problem. Uh, the lack of open CU speakers in this room made us to do a hot swap. Actually, there was a problem with, the speak with this talk, and that's what you have to deal with. Uh, we will have no open CU talk today. Unfortunately. So the pain of USB is here and is waiting for us. Well, um, what's the problem? And what's the matter of this talk? of this topic, I would say, at all. Well, the matter of this talk is obvious, uh, to substitute open source with some hardcore topic. But what's the matter of topic? Um, no one can be sure that he or she will never write device drivers. Yesterday, you were um, a doctor, and now you create a BFS scheduler. Of course, mostly drivers are created by people who are engineers and active Linux users, if we are speaking about Linux drivers, of course. Uh, but from time to time, a user finds himself or herself in a situation when their favorite gadget is not supported in Linux yet. And in this moment, you get to think, how difficult is it to make something and bring this device into life in my favorite operating system? Well, because from my present experience, from news, from other sources, I know that a driver appears when some kernel developer acquires such device and founds it's not working and, well, creates something. Reverse engineers, proprietary driver, or read some data sheet on the protocol, and so on. So, um, In past years, things were much simpler. We had a zoo of legacy interfaces, COM, PS2, uh, LPT interface, and a real zoo of devices which were using these interfaces to connect to your PC. So, uh, this stuff is absolute, well, from the driver developer point of view, this stuff is absolutely human friendly. You just have to know machine instructions, be assembler programmer, you should know computer architecture, uh, such things as interrupts, uh, memory access, and so on. And you should know the architecture of peripheral devices, such as uh, what's inside the controller, input-output ports. Uh, well, sorry. Uh, do you hear me? Cool. Uh, some uh, status word and uh, transfer of data words and so on. Uh, and uh, the problem of contemporary world is that this stuff is easy. But obviously it's not. First of all, we have multitasking. By the way, uh, yeah. First of all, we have multitasking. Uh, that's why our code works in parallel with the operating system. And if we make some experiments, everything dies. 
Uh, I mean, if you make some experience with the experiments with the device. Then, uh, we still have some uh, more isolation of the kernel space uh, versus user space. So we have uh, sooner or later create kernel models for our gadget if we want to make a full functional driver. And uh, finally, uh, our legacy friends, the old interfaces like COM or PS2 or so on, uh, are disappearing. And today, it's typical that your device has only USB interface and nothing else. And all your gadgets are working via this interface. Uh, the idea was to simplify uh, everything. One interface, not much to learn, yeah? But, like, well, Shrek told uh, in the first, in the very beginning of the animation film, uh, Shrek told that ogres have levels or something like this. So that's true for the USB interface. It definitely has levels. Well, uh, if speaking about the USB, uh, you may guess that there is a USB host in your computer and there is a USB gadget, the device which communicates with it. And actually, uh, you may guess that they are rather different, different devices because, well, uh, not all phones had uh, USB host inside of them in previous years, and you may remember this, and that's true. Uh, they are uh, different from the hardware point of view, and they have several levels of communication. The upper level, is a level of functions. On the USB host, you have a client software. On the USB gadget, you have uh, some specific function implementation. Maybe something which presents itself as the uh, USB modem or as the um, USB drive or as anything else like human interface device, mouse or, well, keyboard. Then. The medium level is level of devices. Uh, in the operating system, it is implemented in the USB subsystem of the operating system, yeah. And uh, in the USB gadget, there is a so-called logical device level, a separate representation, which we'll speak a little bit later about. Then uh, on the most low level, there is a um, well, so-called uh, level of the USB bus. There is the USB host controller on the device and USB bus interface. Oh, so USB host controller on the uh, computer and USB bus interface on the device. Then, let's speak about the intermediate level because obviously we cannot tweak USB controller. Uh, that's why, uh, well, the good reason we should uh, deal nothing with the lower level, but the medium level is up to us. Let's speak about the representation of each USB device in this logical level. Actually, hmm, the architecture of all USB devices on this level is absolutely universal, and uh, it's a good news, but there is a bad news also. It's an iceberg which breaks out good intentions of uh, a lot of developers. At the very beginning, you have enthusiasm and you are almost ready to implement your own uh, device firmware or to implement um, your own driver to communicate with some proprietary device. Then you read the specifications and your good intentions die. So each a uh, USB device provides you so-called zero endpoint. Uh, this endpoint allows you to send some requests and to get some answer. This answer should tell you uh, what are the capabilities of this device. Each device has several configurations, at least one. But here on the screen we have a device with two configurations. 
Each configuration has at least one interface. Here we have two configurations, each one with uh, two interfaces. And each interface has several endpoints, which are actually used to implement data exchange for some specific need. If you have uh, remembered uh, some device which is represented when you insert it into your USB port, uh, which is represented by several devices, that's because it has several configurations, several interfaces, and all these things are done via software of the device firmware. That's not a problem. Well, uh, it's a little bit overcomplicated, but you deal with all these hierarchical structure where uh, descriptors. Descriptors are data structure. Well, uh, if someone is a C programmer, which is highly likely taking into account that you are going to reverse engineering some USB driver or to create your own gadget firmware, uh, for C programmers, I'll say uh, that descriptor is some C structure with fields. The device is represented by a device descriptor, and each configuration has its own configuration descriptor with different set of fields, of course. Uh, then uh, each configuration implement some interfaces. Each interface has its own interface descriptor with its own set of fields. Then, uh, as you remember, interface has endpoints. And once again, each endpoint has its own uh, endpoint descriptor, with also, uh, which also has some set of fields, like a structure variable. And uh, finally, that's not all. Uh, it's just not too much place on this slide to speak about it, but there are also string descriptors to make things a little bit more complicated, which are intended uh, to be used to communicate with your device, and theoretically your device can speak in different languages, Beside English, but in fact, well, finally, we got a needed endpoint to deal with, to send data and to receive data. And uh, if we are a strong reader who managed to read all descriptions of all these descriptors, Ask device for the descriptors, get these descriptors to know which endpoint, what type of data transfer. So now we suppose ourselves to be ready to provide some data, data exchange, but unfortunately now we uh, have four protocols which can be supported by the device. Bulk transfer, control transfer, which will uh, set some configuration settings. Bulk transfer is just to transfer data. Is a chronos transfer and interrupt transfer, which are also used to transfer some data, uh, but in a different way. Well, uh, you may guess that th that's the reason of these three types of data transfer are uh, different types of devices, because some of them have uh, to stream data continuously, while others are transferring data from time to time with uh, batches. And which variant is better for you? Well, not for you, but for the device uh, type you are using. Well, um, that makes the reason to implement this or that type of transfer. Uh, by the way, um, you may know or you may know not, but you will know it one, well, few seconds later, that a USB device, uh, even using, even if it uses interrupt transfer, it can no um, start data transfer at all. 
All USB devices are pulled by the USB driver of the host computer. A USB gadget is unable to initiate data transfer even in case of interrupt transfer. So um, the USB host asks device to transfer some data, and only after that, device can speak. And that's uh, just an example of uh, maybe bulk transfer diagram. Um, one more bad news, each of these data transfer modes has its own time diagram, which you have to get into. And each rectangle here is some special batch of some binary batch of data with its own structure, which you have to, well, when I was speaking about an iceberg and about dead intentions, that's the reason. So uh, what can save, save you from such a strong destructor as this USB overcomplicated structure? First of all, you can simplify your life uh, if you work in user space for the very beginning, because at least you will know, uh, you, you will have no need to deal with uh, writing kernel models at the beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit slower, but uh, when you have seen all these uh, complicated details, you have uh, no problems with speed yet. You have only one problem, uh, the USB protocol, which is impossible to keep into human's head at all. So you are going to simplify things. Well, uh, user space is not the only way to simplify things. Actually, we can simplify uh, things much more with uh, several special Linux virtual file systems. First of all, we can use ConfigFS file system to configure our own USB gadget. For example, uh, we want to create our own firmware and we'll use a special file system. Well, uh, you should remember the SysFS file system, which presents you the whole architecture of your computer with a file abstraction. Folders, files inside of them, you read them and know, well, uh, what hardware models do you have and how are they configured. Uh, ConfigFS is the same thing for a gadget which works quite an, in an opposite way. You have, you still have the folders and file structure, but writing into them, you reconfigure your USB gadget to present different configurations different uh, interfaces and different endpoints. So, the first thing to deal with if you are going to create your own firmware and just testing it, uh, information, its information exchange with the PC is to use this configFS on your gadget. And uh, you are using just make dir and echo shell commands to write something, creating folders, writing something to endpoints, and actually uh, the device with specific USB interface appears from nowhere, just because of this magic file system. Uh, and the good way note, uh, well, when you uh, configure some configuration descriptor with standard endpoints, uh, these uh, standard things are appearing automatically. So parts of this structure is recreated automatically by the ConfigFS file system. You just ping it uh, that, well, I want to have a decent point and all structure of um, descriptors appears for it. Then, you can test standard USB functions like human interface device and so on with uh, one more uh, cool Linux file system, FunctionFS. 
Actually, it allows you uh, to pretend your Linux, uh, to make your Linux system pretending uh, as it is a USB gadget with uh, some specific um, functionality. Well, um, what are these two file systems from? What's their origin and how are they used? I think that most of you uh, have Android smartphones with uh, Android 5X or newer. Actually, it's difficult to find anything older. And actually, your Android smartphone is able to pretend itself as USB uh, modem or uh, some something uh, which is not a USB drive, but something similar. Yeah? Um, you just configure it. Or it can uh, present the SD card as a USB stick inserted into USB device. You just use USB cable and configure uh, settings of your Android device uh, in any way just by several clicks. Actually, in this exact moment, ConfigFS and maybe FunctionFS 2 are used on your Android device to give you the requested functionality via the USB cable. Uh, so that's nothing experimental in these, fun in these file systems. They are really widely used uh, in Android, uh, and obviously they are used in some other um, more, speci more specific USB devices, but if firmwares are not open, then you cannot be sure, uh, or if you do not uh, work with this firmware, you cannot be sure which USB function uh, is implemented via FunctionFS there and whether they are using ConfigFS or not, but still, most of, um, many of them do. But uh, in Android, you can control this because, well, open source uh, shows you the internals. Um, so, you are going to prototype your own gadget and you are going to try some data transfer. What things can you use? Some kernel models will be needed. Well, actually, uh, first of all, you will have a model composite, which will use FunctionFS and ConfigFS to present your Linux device as the USB gadget. Uh, depending on configuration you are going to use, um, some standard functions will need additional kernel models. For example, mass storage will be model will be used. Um, well, you know what uh, is this name about, to use some USB storage, to present your system as some USB storage. Then uh, you will have several uh, data transfer, for example, for a USB modem, and human interface device is, well, keyboard, mouse, and so on. Then, what should you do in user space? First of all, you should mm, make some code, maybe script, or just a set of shell commands to compose your USB device with all these models. Sounds easy. Make dir, echo. Unfortunately, that's not all. You will also need to implement some USB functions. Yeah? Standard functions are implemented in a really easy way. You can just uh, present the drive image of your USB mass storage, for example, and it will be presented as a USB flash drive. Uh, 
uh, where the USB cable. Uh, you can use some data socket uh, and redirect it well to send data. Um, if speaking about human interface device, things may be even easier. You can uh, <laughs> uh, use input output redirection to write into specific virtual files. But still, you need some code or even some script or some image which will be used as the USB functions with this specific function FS file system. Uh, which one depends on which USB function are you going to implement. Um, that's true for standard functions. If speaking about implementing some non-standard USB device with proprietary protocol, then USB functions will not help you. FunctionFS implements only set of standard USB classes. In this situation, you are going uh, to use uh, less human-friendly stuff in the user space, uh, so-called uh, libUSB library, which is uh, not uh, very simple stuff to deal with. Not because the library is difficult, because the hierarchical level of descriptors, configurations, and so on is uh, really difficult. And if you create an API to deal with some rather low level and overcomplicated stuff, in this situation, uh, you will get a low level and overcomplicated API. Um, if this API has to deal directly with uh, bulk transfers, control transfers, interrupt transfers, and so on, is a Kronos transfers, for example, with these four types of data transfer. In this case, you have no way to simplify things. So a good idea is to start uh, getting into the USB protocol with something standard. In this case, it will um, present itself like something simple, like here on this slide, and uh, start with some reverse engineering of the USB protocols later when you get familiar with this. Well, the platform, then one more unweighted obstacle. Your workstation or your laptop has no USB device controller. It sounds terrible, but you have USB host controller, and the USB device controller is something quite opposite. You may think that, well, USB host is much more powerful, and it would be able to implement everything, but that's not true. Some USB gadgets, which have USB host capabilities, are able to pretend themselves either as USB host or USB device. So these gadgets, these small, small boxes, have universal controllers, which can do both things. Uh, but your laptop or your PC is not so universal. It is only USB host and has no USB device capabilities. Well, it's not a disaster, but still, um, it's, one more, it's one more destructor. So you need something which isn't a personal computer at all, or which is not a traditional personal computer. A uh, good choice is Raspberry Pi or any other single board computer based on the ARM. Of course, most of these experiments are done on Raspberry Pi because they are wider seen in real life. And if you turn your hand here and there, you can find someone with an unused Raspberry Pi device. 
maybe from the first generation or a second one, which was bought uh, like a pulse buy because it was cheap. Uh, then the owner uh, connected it to his display, keyboard, and so on. Uh, used it for about half an hour. Discovered that his favorite uh, desktop software can be <laughs> executed there on some Raspberry Pi uh, built distro, but the speed is obviously a problem, especially if it was uh, the first generation Raspberry Pi, which was about 600 of megahertz, which is nothing, and one core. It's wow. Uh, LibreOffice, which launches and launches and launches and and you go to have a cup of coffee, and you go back, and wow, it started. So that's why a um, Raspberry Pi device is easy to find for some experiments with your own firmware. But that's not the only choice. For example, if you are dealing with a real gadget, for example, Raspberry Pi, on the host, you have, obviously, a USB port. And by the way, you have a gadget uh, with a USB port, too, and you have a USB cable. But on the host, uh, this uh, USB port is communicating with the USB driver of the host and a client software, yeah? Obviously. For example, a USB driver represents it as a USB storage, and client software, for example, a file manager, communicates with it. Then, on the device, you have USB driver of the device and the device software, which communicates with it somehow. But a uh, less known thing is a so-called dummy HCD kernel model. Yes, your personal computer has no USB device capabilities. So uh, the first thing you can think about is some emulation. Well, we have a lot of virtual machines. We have. Uh, uh, multi-architecture uh, emulators like QAML, which can emulate almost ever, uh, anything. Well, it's well, of course, it's not so universal, but still, the amount of supported architecture is really great. So, uh, good news. We should definitely find uh, some virtual machine which supports the U device, USB device controller, um, but. When you deal with virtual machines, you discover that things are a little bit different. Uh, the task of virtual machine is quite an opposite. Most virtual machines provide you some capabilities to make a path through of real USB gadget inside of into the operating system of your, which is running as a guest in your virtual machine, yeah? Virtual box, USB uh, device uh, path through, and so on. But uh, if you're trying to do an opposite thing, you are unhappy. It's just um, not implemented. No virtualization system which I'm aware about is able to emulate the device controller and make a path through of your, well, a few slides maybe. Yeah. So uh, the dummy HCD driver will self you. <laughs> HCD is host device controller. Dummy HCD is a kernel model which emulates the device controller in, on your host. Actually, um, after you run it, your host sees one more additional device controller inside of it, which is uh, virtually redirected to your normal host controller. So you get virtual USB cable connected to some virtual host device controller on the same computer. And uh, you can communicate, you can send something commands to USB device controller, and some data will appear 
like they have arrived to USB host controller, uh, which is actual controller you have. Um, if you would like not to deal with Raspberry Pi and so on, you can just use this driver to emulate uh, the USB uh, channel. Uh, actually, I, um, you will run in the same OS, in the same operating system, your um, device software <laughs> and your client software. But they will not notice it. Uh, software which you can use. LSUSB is just a user space tool to see all uh, details about the USB device, including some specific of descriptors. LibUSB is user space library which allows you to deal with uh, bulk transfers and so on. Wireshark is an absolutely uh, must need tool to communicate with uh, proprietary and unknown USB product uh, devices because it explains you, uh, well, uh, you know that maybe um, you can use Wireshark to uh, debug networking connections, but it has a USB driver which allows you to see uh, the byte by byte, the USB packets which are sent via the USB or virtual USB even. Uh, in the same way like you uh, debug your networking. How to get into the stuff? Uh, two last slides, I think. Uh, I'll advise you to have five steps. First, uh, catch the information exchange with uh, Wireshark. You can use LSUSB to overview the structure of your device and track some simple communication in Wireshark. For example, uh, track the press of a button on a USB keyboard. The second step, data transfer specifics. Um, here you will need to deal with LibUSB, uh, at least uh, to initiate something really simple with examples. Third step, you can build your own firmware with ConfigFS. Uh, your own device which pretends some, to be some standard class. Then, implement some standard functions with FunctionFS. And the five uh, stage, you uh, know enough to try to reverse engineer some proprietary driver with Wireshark and to create your own. Well, that was uh, the last slide, as you see the number in the right bottom corner. Um, thank you for hearing this.